section 3.2, polynomial function and their graphs. And they go ahead and put the definition of a polynomial function here at the top of their page 113. I'll go ahead and give you an example of what a polynomial function would look like. So here's one example right here. x of x equals negative 3x to the fifth plus square root of 2x squared plus 5. We're looking for, we're looking for real numbers in front of your variable. So this negative 3 is the real number, the square root 2 is the real number, and this 5 is the real number. Again, that would be in front of a x to the 0. And then we're also looking for your degree to be non-negative. So look over here, this degree is 5, this degree is 2, and this degree is going to be 0, because it's going to be, if you look at it carefully, this is going to be x to the 0. So the same thing as 1, okay? This would be a polynomial function. This would be a polynomial function of degree 5. It's degree 5 because um, the highest power is 5. And the leading coefficient, we'll look at this a lot in this section of this chapter, leading coefficient is going to be negative 3. The highest power is 5, the leading coefficient is going to be that value in front of the variable, it's going to be the negative 3. Okay. Another example of a polynomial function would be something like this, g of x equals negative 3x to the fourth, parentheses x minus 2, parentheses x minus or x plus 3. Now, if we want to find the degree, there's two ways to find the degree. I'm going to show you the long way to find the degree and then the shortcut. The long way to find the degree is actually go ahead and multiply this out. So I multiply this out, I get x squared plus 3x minus 2x would give plus 1x minus 6. I have this negative 3x to the fourth beginning. And that gives me negative 3x to the sixth uh, minus 3x to the fifth plus 18x to the fourth. And here the polynomial function would have the degree of Six because the highest degree is six right here, and the lean coefficient would be six. And that's it. Lean coefficient would be the negative three. Okay. Again, the highest power is six, and then the coefficient in front of that um, term is negative three. Now what I did was I went ahead and multiplied that out, multiplied this by FOIL, and got this, and just multiplied, distributed this out and got this polynomial function. If I want to find the degree of this right here, I would just add the powers. This is 4, power of 4, would be a power of 1, power of 1, 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 6. So 4 plus 1 plus 1 equals 6. Okay, I got the one because we had understood one and one here. If you see something like this and you want to find the uh, degree, you don't have to do all this right here unless you want to. You could just add four plus one plus one get six in. Okay. Let me give you some examples of what's not a polynomial function. So here I have f of x equals negative three square root of x plus square root two x squared plus four. Technically, this is the same thing as negative 3x to the 1 half plus square root 2 x squared plus 5. This would not be a polynomial function because right here, this is a fraction, and we're looking for a non negative integer. So we're looking for something that's a positive integer. All your degrees or all your x ones need to be positive integers. Well, this is not an integer. An integer is something like this. Positive integers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. These are positive integers.
I'm looking for degrees that are positive integers. And that right there is not one. Okay? So this would not be a polynomial function. Something like this would not be a polynomial function if I had g of x equals negative 3 over x squared plus square root 2 x squared plus 5. Right here I have, this is the same thing as negative 3x to the negative 2. If I wanted to move this up to the top, this exponent would become negative. And right now I have a integer or a power here that's not positive integer. Remember, we're looking for a non-negative. We're looking for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, and 10, and so on. Okay. Right there, this would be why it's not a Looking for degrees that are positive integers. So far we've looked at constant functions. Constant function would be something like f of x equals a number. So for example, um, y equals 5. That would be a constant function. This is a polynomial function of degree zero. Okay. When we're looking at something like this, the polynomial function of the degree of zero. We look at linear functions. We have f of x equals um, mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. This is a polynomial of degree one because this x here has a exponent of one. We look at quadratic functions. This is degree two. This x has a power of two there. Okay. Polynomial func functions of degree two or higher have graphs that are smooth and continuous. So we looked at this already. We looked at this in the last section. Um, yeah, I get black up here. We looked at the quadratic functions. This right here is smooth right here. So it seems to be smooth. If you had a function like this, this would not be smooth. Not smooth. Okay. Continuous. We know break, but smooth just means um, means rounded corners. So what I'm going to do in this section is when we graph our polynomial function, I want to see your corners um, look like this right here. I don't want to see any of this right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at something called green coefficient test. This is very important. This little chart here, you probably want a copy of it um, when you take your next exam. Um, I'll give you a copy of this in the exam. I'll try to give you a copy on your test um, or you can put it on your note card. Uh, but I'll try to give you a copy of this right here. So this will be given to you on the exam. The leading coefficient test looks at n behaviors for graph of polynomial functions. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're looking at polynomial function, and if you can tell what the leading coefficient is, it's going to tell you what's going to happen at the end of each uh, polynomial function when you graph it. Okay? Let's look at some examples. Use the leading coefficient test to determine the end behavior of the graph given here. Okay? We look at this um, function here. Look at the leading coefficient. Well, the degree is 3 right here. So the degree is 3. Okay, that 3 is right here. The leading coefficient is 1. The 1 is right here. Alright, it's positive 1. 
important note, positive one. So degree of three right here and lead coefficient of positive one. We'll do go back up to our chart here. And notice how my um, degree is positive one. Actually, it's, actually, before I go here, it's really not important that it's positive. It's just a degree of 1. Okay. So the degree is uh, 3, and the lead coefficient is positive 1. I should write that down. Positive 1. Okay, so anyway, the degree is 3. The degree is 3. 3 is odd, right? So go over here and look at where n is odd, n is even. So n is your degree. So n is odd. So we'll look at this side of the table here. 3 is odd. And the leading coefficient is positive 1, so we're at positive here. So this is what we're looking at. We're actually in this case right here. Okay. Going back here, degree is 3, 3 is odd, and here we have positive. So we go over here and we look at this, and we know that if we look at the polynomial function, we were actually graph it out. We know that on the left hand side, that polynomial function is going to fall, and the right hand side is going to rise. Okay. So the graph looks something like this. We don't know what's going to happen in the middle. Something happens in the middle, and then it rises right. Okay. So when you take your test, um, and I ask you what's happening at the end, or give me the end behaviors, you could shade in this. You could go ahead and draw this for me. Kind of draw this right here, which is what I did right there. Or you could say it just falls left and rises right. We'll talk about what happens in the middle later on in this chapter, but right now I want to know what happens at the end of the quantum function. What happens on the left hand side and what happens on the right hand side. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this next one on your own. Tell me what happens at the end of the uh, this, this graph right here. Go ahead and pause your video. Okay, so this on your own problem, the degree is 4, which is right here. Leading coefficient is positive 1. So I went ahead and wrote n is even. Because 4 is even. Leading coefficient is positive. So we can go back to this chart here. N is even, so we're actually on this side. And the leading coefficient was positive, so we have positive. So it looks like this graph right here. <clears throat> so we're going to have a graph that looks like this. We don't know what happens in the middle. We know that it's going to rise left, rise. Let's go on to the next sample. Use the lean coefficient test to determine the end behaviors of this graph right here. And remember, we can go ahead, if we really want to, we can go ahead and multiply this all out and to find the degree. Or you could take the 3 plus 2 plus 1, and the degree would be 6. Okay, so I took 3 plus 2 plus 1 to get the degree of 6. So degree is 6, which is even. The so degree is even. Degree, we could say n is even. Okay. And then the lean coefficient is going to be, I mean, if you were to multiply it all out, the first term would be this right here with a degree of 6. So lean coefficient is negative 4. How about right? Negative 4. So lean coefficient is negative. If we look back at our chart here, n is even, lean coefficient is negative. So we have n is even, lean coefficient is negative, it's going to fall left, fall right. So it's going to look something like this. So you can, if you were to answer the question on the test, you have two ways to answer. You can do this. Just show me that it falls left, falls right. And then Something happens in the middle, we don't know yet. Or you could say fall left, falls right. Okay. Um, we're getting to the end of this 15-minute uh, time limit. So we'll talk next in the next video about zero as a polynomial function. So I'm going to stop it. And we'll start the next video and finish up this chapter or section.